Hey everyone, today I'll walk you through another data structure used in C++ called a vector. Vectors use contiguous storage like arrays, meaning memory is allocated as a single chunk. Unlike arrays, with vectors we don't have to store the size as a constant. Vectors have dynamic storage. To illustrate the concept of vectors, we're being asked by a game development firm to create an inventory system for a fantasy quest. This inventory system will follow a last in, first out order, assuming our user is most likely to use their most recently acquired items like healing potions and least likely to use the items they've been carrying around for a while. Vectors are perfect for handling this last in, first out mechanic. We start by including the necessary directives. Hashtag include IO stream. As well as our new vector directive. This program will be manipulating strings and formatting console output as well, so we'll include the string and IO manip directives. Our Fantasy Quest inventory program will take in user input as a character. We'll set this care to user input. Now we'll declare our vector by writing vector of type string. Whenever we see these angle braces, we know we're pulling from a template. In this case, we're pulling from the built-in vector constructor provided from the vector directive. We'll call our new vector inventory. At the moment, our inventory is empty. To fill out our vector, the vector template provides us with built-in functionality. The pushback function allows us to build our function with the items that will be in our inventory. Inventory.pushback. Inside the parenthesis, we add the item names that we want to push into the inventory vector. We'll add a magic skull. How about a sword and then our last item will be something recently acquired uh, potion next we'll build out a function to print out the inventory to the user we'll name this function print inventory and it will take in our new inventory vector as input In the vector menu, we want to display the amount of items in our inventory. So we'll start writing out our print inventory function. Void print inventory. Which will take in a vector of type string. We'll call this inventory. Do some formatting. Setting a width of 16 and filling it with some asterisks to give it that uh, old school console game effect. See out player inventory. And we'll copy and paste line nine. This is just some basic formatting. Now we'll see out five asterisks. So we want to display the amount of items in our inventory. There's another built-in vector function that finds the size of our vector that can help us with this. This is the dot size function which we can call against our inventory. Inventory dot size 
This will print out the number of items in our inventory. And then we'll end this with some more basic formatting. Another thing to take note of is I currently have word wrap on. Um, so this is all on one line of code. I do this because I zoom in my code when I'm going over the code with, with uh, in the videos. So um, it's just something to take note of. Uh, so this will print out the number of items in our inventory, which is currently three items. And then we're gonna set up a uh, a for loop to print out each item in the inventory, which we can do by building a basic for loop that accesses the inventory size again through this dot size function. And then we can output the inventory items uh, like you would with an array just by uh, using the brackets. So now we can compile this code. Looks like we had a slight error on line 12. Now when we run this, uh, we see our player inventory, the asterisk formatting from IO manip, as well as the vector functionality provided by dot size and uh, uh, iterating through our inventory with the brackets and the pushback function that fills our inventory. Now we want our user to be able to use an item. To do this, we'll create a condition taking in the user input. So after we print inventory, we'll see out use item. We'll ask the user if they want to use the most recently acquired item. Remember, our boss asked for a last in first out inventory program. So to print the last item in our vector, we can call the built-in vector function dot back against our inventory function. Inventory dot back. And then some more game formatting. The character will either be a Y or an N. And we'll take in our user input one more time. Now we'll set up a condition where the user uses the last item, which would be the potion in this case. So if user input equals y, See out you used inventory dot back. This is our dot back function again, which will print out the last part of our vector. And now we want to call the built in vector function pop back to delete the last item from the list. We can say inventory dot pop back. And then we'll print our updated inventory to the user. We can do this by running our function print inventory. And we'll compile our code again, clear the screen. And now when we run inventory, we'll be asked if we want to use that last item potion. We'll say yes. You use potion, prints the inventory again. Everything's working good. 
But what if we wanted to use something from the middle or the beginning of our inventory, our sword or magic skull perhaps? This is where vectors as a data structure can be somewhat limiting. Also, why it's important to remember the constraints of our original project. They asked us for a last in, first out uh, program, which the vector offers us this last in, first out data structure. So we can access the sword or the magic skull items by building out a new function. We'll call this scroll inventory. So we'll start by adding in the condition where the user isn't using the first uh, or the last element of our vector. Or in this case, the user doesn't want to use the potion. And then we'll call scroll inventory against our inventory vector. This will work, require us to write a new function. So in our scroll inventory, we'll call the vector of type string as a formal parameter again. And uh, our scroll inventory function will have to declare uh, our user input variable again, this time as a local uh, variable in the function. And we'll start by writing a for loop that iterates through the inventory a second time. For int i equals and we want it to take the item that comes before the potion. So we can do this by saying inventory dot size minus two because our uh, our number will start at zero, right? So i is less than inventory dot size i plus plus see out use item so we use the dot size function again and inside our c out we'll use the dot at function to reference the vector element at position i so we do this by uh, writing inventory dot at i This will ask the user if they want to use uh, the sword, hopefully. And we'll end that line. We'll take in the user input again. Oh my. And set up a condition where the user wants to use the sword. Alright, so now is where things get a bit tricky for vectors. In order to delete this item of the sword from our vector, we'll need to swap its place with the last item of the vector. Remember, last in, first out, and uh, our popback function will only access the last element when it deletes it. So to do this, we'll set the inventory i to inventory dot back. Now this swaps sword with potion in this case, and then we'll run our pop back function.
and we'll print our inventory, our updated inventory to the user. So now we'll run this just to make sure everything's working properly. Use item potion, no. Use item sword, yes. And there you see the inventory is listing the magic skull and the potion. So this, uh, this little trick we used of setting uh, our uh, sword element to the potion element and then using the pop back, back function actually ends up working in our favor. So now we need to set another condition for if the user wants to use the magic skull. Um, and this uses pretty much the same logic as uh, before. We'll also want to add in a, uh, a message after the user uses the uh, sword that says now exiting inventory. So, if the user answers no to using the sword, then we'll see out use item inventory dot at i minus one because we're going up the list now. Yes or no end that line, take in the user input, and set up the condition where the user answers Y to using the magic skull. Now we can say, see out, you used I minus one, and we'll set this to inventory dot back, inventory dot pop back. Again, we'll print the updated inventory to the user. And we'll print out now exiting inventory. And we'll set up a condition where the user answers no to using any items. Else if user input equals n once again, and we just copy and pasted that. And in this uh, condition, We'll break the loop. We'll give this a save. We'll run inventory again. We'll refuse the potion. We don't want to use the sword. And we'll use the magic skull. And now it prints out the only two remaining items in our inventory, a potion and a sword. Um, we'll run inventory again. We don't want to use the potion. We don't want to use the sword. We don't want to use the magic skull. It'll just exit the inventory. So there you go. That's the basics of using vectors uh, in C++. Obviously, there's more elegant ways to go around writing a simple inventory system than using uh, 67 lines of code as we did here. I'm sure you could make uh, some sort of recursive function uh, to call this scroll inventory or to make the print inventory run a little smoother. Uh, but this illustrates the, the basics of the built-in vector function and it also provides insight on some of the limitations of using a vector. Um, this program would be made much uh, 
easier or, or more efficiently by implementing linked lists, uh, which we'll go over in future videos. Uh, but for now, this is how you implement and use uh, the built-in vector templates in C++. Thanks for watching.